looking at the landscape of the East right now, you have the Milwaukee Bucks, but it seems like Chris Middleton, Giannis, injuries are just getting in their way right now. Damian Lillard talking about how he didn't work out all summer this year when he came into training camp, and he said he came into training camp out of shape. And then you also have, I don't know, the Miami Heat, where we don't know what Jimmy Butler is going to be, but I think the Celtics have gotten over that hurdle with the Miami Heat mentally. And then it's kind of just, what are the Pacers going to do? The Knicks, no one wants to play for Tom Thibodeau because every single time they do a poll, who's the coach you would least like to play for? It's Tom Thibodeau, so they're not getting any better. So do you think their biggest competition in the East would be a team like Indiana if they add a player? Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately the Heat, if they lose Jimmy Butler, they're going to take a step back. The Bucks feel like they're getting old, but then also feel like they're getting chemistry issues. We saw a lot of Doc Rivers teams ends up having that issues, whether and I can use pretty much every example with Philadelphia with James Harden and Joel Embiid or with the Clippers or with the Celtics. We saw the big four and the Celtics and all the chemistry issues they had eventually. So I think they're going to end up crashing and burning. So really, it's like a team like the Pacers, if maybe they can reform that um, United trip with uh, Paul George. I know he's available this summer. Um, but outside of that, like the Knicks, I don't the Knicks were a great story, but I felt like, you know, Jalen Brunson going on the Michael Jordan run that he did. I just don't see them duplicating that again. So, yeah, I mean, it would be a team like the Pacers, unless if there's another team that comes from the woodworks that completely blows up. But. I just don't know if that happens yet. Yeah, and it's like, again, they didn't even need Porzingis to beat the Pacers. So if we have a healthy Porzingis, it's like, okay, that takes this team to a whole nother level. And if they run it back with the exact same team, I think they'll get better just by Sam Hauser, undrafted rookie free agent, came over from the main red claws, hitting massive threes in the NBA Finals. He got hot and stretching. The Celtics are so good, they have a guy designated for half-court shots. Yeah, yeah, that was insane. So, yeah, I mean, this team, I think that they can easily get through the East. And then on the West side, it's like the Nuggets could give them trouble potentially. Other than that, like the Timberwolves are probably going to lose Carl Anthony Towns this year. And then the Mavericks, I think they'll see a bit of a finals hangover. Um, I don't think they come back next year unless if they make a big move. So really, like I look at the Nuggets as their big threat. The Thunder, if they can get a piece potentially. They're always good. I mean, they're competitive and they have assets. So that'd be a great series, too. Yeah. So those are the two teams that I could see that. But I think they're due for another finals appearance next year. Yeah, definitely. Because if they made the finals versus the Miami Heat last year, Jason Tatum sprains his ankle the first play versus the Miami Heat. Who knows if the Celtics would have completed the comeback because it's never been done in NBA history. But that would have been three straight finals appearances for them. And it seems like. They were a little bit iffy on Joe Missoula last year, but now that they're fully bought in, I feel like this team can get even better, especially with Drew Holiday and with Derek White, Peyton Pritchard, even someone like uh, Sam Hauser, just getting better, getting a little more mature. And as Drew Holiday said, even our white guys play defense, which was honestly my biggest concern with the Celtics because I'd watch them in the regular season. I'm like, why are three white guys on the court right now? Like, this is the NBA. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think for sure. I mean, especially with they have the title now and now they're trying to just prove to them that it wasn't just a fluke. And if they can make it back to the finals and win it again, nobody can really take that away from them. So they played tough defense. They hit a bunch of threes and a lot of people have bought in. Joe Mazzula is a little goofy, but ultimately it turns out he's a great coach. Plus also, as we mentioned with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, it seems like for a while they didn't quite know who was on and like how to make that work. But now that we have Tatum as more of a playmaker and then Jalen Brown, who's going to take that tough shot, they figured out how to make that work. So Celtics can be scary for the next few years. Yeah, definitely. Especially like their defense. I feel like Tatum's defense gets better every year. But you did have ESPN. It seemed like they were just parading people around to I don't know if it was necessarily to hate on the Celtics, but I have no idea why Joel Embiid, of all people, was on there to talk about the Boston Celtics and then. He may get fined potentially for, I don't know, recruiting outside of the uh, league year for 2024 because he basically was like, yeah, we're going to load up next year, even though I can never stay healthy and I never have stayed healthy. And it's just something I haven't done in my career. And I also have never beat the Boston Celtics. And he's talking about 
oh yeah, the run was easy. I was injured. Like you would have made a difference. Like Joel Embiid, you were going to make a difference when at times Al Horford was shutting you down. At times Jason Tatum was blocking you in that series. And then you let Tatum drop 50 or I think that was the, yeah, I think that was the game. He had 50 in game six, right? And then yeah. people are talking about how Tatum isn't clutch yet. They put Joel Embiid on this pedestal, even though Joel Embiid has never been out of the second round. He's talking like he's someone who can make a difference versus the Boston Celtics. And your difference maker is going to be Paul George of all people. First of all, what sane person moves from LA to Philadelphia? Yeah, no, I don't think Paul George. Okay. Here's the thing. Joel Embiid has been in the league now for 10 years now. And there's a history here. He hasn't beaten the Celtics once. Even when the Celtics were in rebuild, he can't beat the Celtics. And then he's had talent like Jimmy Butler. He's had James Harden. He's had, and now he's trying to get Paul George. And none of it's worked. They haven't made it out of the the second round once. And everything you've said about Joel Embiid, I agree with here. But it'd be one thing if... The Heat were saying that if they said, oh, well, if if Jimmy Butler would have said that, I would have said, OK, that's valid because Jimmy Butler has beaten him on multiple occasions. Twice. All right. Yeah. But for the Sixers, this is equivalent to Micah Parsons saying to the 49ers, like, yeah, the reason why they made the Super Bowl is because they didn't run into us. It's like, yeah, but it doesn't matter because they own you the last decade. So it doesn't even matter if they ran into you because they've had your number for the last decade. Like the, you can't beat them. Yeah, and they literally, it's exactly the same as Micah Parsons. You know why? It's because when they faced the Celtics in that Brett Brown era, the Celtics were literally the youngest team in the league at that point, similar to the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, exactly. And so, and then, yeah, exactly, similar to them. So, I mean, I think, you know, Paul George will make them better, no doubt about it, but who are they going to give up to get Paul George? And Paul George is also older. He's been in the league now for... 12, 13 years now. He's 34. Are you going to have to get rid of Tyrese Maxey to get him? Are you going to have to get rid of more picks? You already made big trades to get James Harden. And at this point, you have this massive contract to overcome with Tobias Harris. Who wants that contract? So I don't think you guys can get Chris uh, Paul George if you wanted to. I know who wants that contract. The Suns. The Suns? They, I mean, the Suns are the team that probably accumulates the most bad contracts in the league like picture tobias harris um bradley Bradley beal Beal, devin booker we still don't have a point guard maybe tobias harris is going to play point forward and at one point kevin durant was tied to the philadelphia 76ers but i don't even think kevin durant would get the sixers over the celtics at this point in his career maybe five years